Hey guys, Chase Gilroy here with a brand new video training series. I'm going to show you guys all about how to use Final Cut Pro X and the tricks and tips that I've learned to get myself where I'm at with the program today. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open Final Cut Pro. So basically this tutorial is going to show you, uh, we're going to give you an overview of what Final Cut Pro's interface looks like, where you can find everything, and how to move about the workspace efficiently. All right, first up, top left, we're gonna show you um, up here is the, this area is called the libraries browser. Um, and libraries are where you hold all your events. A library is, is, you can tell it's a library by the four square stars. That's the library, Gilroy tutorials. And then we have in the library, our event. Event is just a one square star and we're gonna do the basics of Final Cut Pro X. That's our tutorial today. So let me zoom back out. So there's the libraries browser. You can close it by clicking this button here so you don't have to see it or you can leave it open and you can have options like group clips by, sort them by, all that different stuff. Uh, play with those options, see what you like the best. I like to keep them default, works best for me. Uh, next, right beside this area, this this area right here is called the event browser. And appropriately enough, because this is an event, and once you click this, you'll see all of the video files that are in that event. Okay? Now, if you look right here, this area is the, the viewer. Um, what you see in this panel is what's going to display on screen. This is what is going to show your video. You have uh, two different options up here. You can choose to zoom in. Uh, let me select a clip here. You can choose to zoom in to whatever percentage you want. Uh, and then if you click this little box here, you can scroll around it, which is pretty handy. If you're doing like fine tuning, keyframing, stuff like that. Um, but it's always good to, once you start, uh, hit fit so you can see everything that's going on in the frame all at once. Uh, this, little, this little light switch here gives you a bunch of different things. You can sh hit show video scopes, which shows you the intensity of each color channel for that clip. Um, you can also show angles, which I'll do a separate video on uh, what exactly that view is used for. Very cool, very awesome. Um, you're gonna wanna know that, so look forward to that tutorial. Um, show both fields. Haven't used that yet. Probably never will. <laughs> and let's see here. I hate that. Okay, here we go. All right, so you can choose the quality, better quality, or better performance. Uh, the media you can choose to show the optimized original or proxy media, and we'll get into that later. And you can also choose like uh, the different color channels. If you'd rather see the red color channel, the green color channel, you know, different things like that. But obviously, you want to see them all. For the purposes of editing pranks, you're probably not going to get into uh, messing with all of that kind of stuff. We'll keep it pretty basic. I'll show you how I, I do a quick edit um, in a later video. Okay, now if you see this little button right here, we click this button. This pulls up your inspector. And the inspector, obviously, if, if you don't have anything selected, it's not going to show you anything. This is a, it's an active panel, so that that means whatever you're, whatever you have selected, it's going to show you properties for whatever you have selected, um, and it's a very very useful panel. I would recommend keeping this panel open all the time. Only close it to save space. In the inspector panel, uh, we've got a, a video clip selected, and if you hit info, it's going to show you a bunch of cool stuff. It's going to show you the duration. It's going to show you when it was created. It's also going to show you the video quality, the audio sampling, and um, and a bunch of other key things. And you can put in you can put in your own notes and metadata in here, which is really really nice. It shows you uh, down here where it's at, what event, where it's at on the uh, hard drive, and a bunch of other stuff. Really useful panel there. Um, you can change a bunch of stuff like uh, the color the audio you could mute it um, and this I'm just flying through this because we don't want we don't want to show 
too much of this uh, without going into greater detail. At this point, we're just showing you a tour of Final Cut Pro. So moving on, I think we got the basics of the the libraries, the event browser, the viewer. Um, oh, I did. I forgot to show you. So also in the viewer, if you have a clip selected, obviously we can't really do anything with this button here yet because we haven't dragged our clip into the timeline and we can't drag our clip into the timeline because we haven't created a new project so let me go ahead and do that now we'll title this uh, training and while I have this dialog box open I can show you a couple things so when you start a new project um, the project is going to be your main timeline for whatever video you're trying to produce so we're gonna make a video called training series whoops nice series well I can't spell okay here we go uh, yes okay um, and we can choose what event to put that in obviously we only have one event inside of our library right now the basics of Final Cut Pro X you can choose uh, when your starting time code is Say if you've if you've had your uh, video clips synced to a slate board, uh, that'd be useful there. And the video properties you can set them based on the first video clip you import, or you can do custom properties. You can set your your uh, resolution format. Um, you can do that there, and you can set your frame rate over here. I always keep set based on first video clip, just to keep it congruent. And I always use the same camera, so if you use different cameras. I would definitely recommend doing a custom setup like this, but if you use the same camera for all of it, I would just choose this uh, default set based on first video clip. Um, the audio and render properties, I usually leave that as default also, but if you do choose to go custom, you can set your different audio channels, your sample rate, you can choose what you want, um, and then your render format. I always change this in the output settings, but you can do it here if you want to. Um, but Or you could just click use automatic settings. It's pretty basic. So for now, we're going to just choose uh, default set based on first video clip. We'll leave everything the way it is and click OK. So now you'll notice inside of our event browser, you got, you got your project. And you can tell uh, Final Cut gives you these little icons that help you identify what these things are. And um, maybe I should mention, you can view this event browser two different ways. You can view it in the list, like I have it here, or you can, if you're, if you're uh, privy to iMovie, which I don't really like, you can, you can view it as film strips, which I kind of, I kind of actually hate. I hate it. It's ugly. So you can have these film strips or whatever. But uh, for my purposes. I'm going to use the list because I think that's the bomb.com. So now we have a project inside our training series. And to be quite honest, you can have as many projects inside of an event as you want. So say we wanted to create a new project, just go up to file and we'll go new and we'll go project. And we can call this one just for shits. And since we put it in that same event, we've got another project in there in the same event, and we can make two different videos based on all of these same clips that are in here. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to the timeline. Uh, the timeline is down here at the bottom. Obviously, this is where all your magic happens. This is where every part of your, every clip you bring in is going to end up down here. Whatever our playhead scrubs across, is going to be what shows up in the viewer and what shows up in the viewer is what you see on screen in your final product so if I could show you quickly I'm just gonna go ahead and drag down one of these full clips I'm just gonna drag it from here right down into the timeline and I'm gonna drag another one right beside it and I want you to notice what happens if you drag a clip and try to move it and let it go it's gonna snap back into place that's because Final Cut Pro 10, oops, I don't want you to see that yet. Final Cut Pro 10 uses what's called a magnetic timeline. Um, and the magnetic timeline means you can move things around, but they're always going to stay butted up next to each other. 
Uh, we can also move things above the timeline. That's called an appended clip or, an, or a cutaway or overlay, whatever program you're used to using. Um, and we can also take audio files and drag them underneath. Uh, and you can put video files underneath too. It's really cool, and we'll get really in depth in creating. Um, you can create uh, other storylines, like say this one's above the storyline. You can go say create storyline, and we can have two different storylines up here. Um, this is this is a uh, kind of an advanced technique, but we'll get in, we'll get into that later. So basically, um, what I've showed you is our library panel. We've got our event browser, and we've got our viewer, and we've got our inspector panel far right over here, and then our timeline down below. You will use every single one of these panels when you start editing in Final Cut, and each one of them are powerful in their own regard, and you'll need to know how to utilize each of them independently to maximize your workflow efficiency. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to import your media files and where they're all stored on the computer. I know that might seem redundant, but it's actually quite important when you start when you start gathering a bunch of media files and clogging up your computer. That's about it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Leave all your comments in the comment section below. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see all of you right back here next time. Take your camera and you're going to secure it to your box. So we're going to use Velcro that you can buy at the grocery store or whatever. And we're going to stick the Velcro 